on tonight is truth or consequences. We choose. Okay, God says before death and life, He says, choose life that you and your seed may live and may multiply. Okay, it's just a tiny little bit uh, because this is important where I'm going in our text tonight. This is real important. John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. Yes. The Word was with God, God. and the Word was God. Ooh, Still yeah. is. Amen? Yes. Yes. That's very important. Now, John chapter 8, <laughs> John chapter 8, and verse 30 says, As, as Jesus spoke these words, many believed. Uh, Jesus spoke, people believed. Uh, and uh, on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews that believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Exactly. You see, many people start this race, but they don't finish it. They don't go very far. Okay, so if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, the truth shall make you and free. the truth shall make you free. Yes. Make you free. Now John chapter 14, yes, surely does. and what was prophesied tonight, John chapter 14 and verse 6, that's how I knew it was time to uh, change all the service because when the, the Lord prophesied my message, John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Mm -hmm. okay, this is ba Basically, that's what every people are looking for, the way, the truth, and the life. And so I want to lay that foundation again, remind you. Now turn to Jeremiah chapter 23. What I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to give you a couple of texts, uh, because we already had part one of this message. So, Jeremiah chapter 23, and we're going to illustrate this to a, a couple of texts within the Bible tonight. And uh, this is going to give us an understanding of the, of the hour that we're living in, and this is going to help you understand how you and I, when we hear truth, God's looking for a response. So, God will give me and you, give people truth, then He, want, he looks for our response. And then he knows how ready or not ready that we are. He knows whether to promote us or that we need another trip around the mountain. Okay, so Jeremiah chapter 23, and I'm going to begin in verse 9. Uh, my heart, this Jeremiah the prophet, and I've, I've shared this not too long ago, but I, uh, I think it's important to, to share this. Okay, my heart within me is broken. Okay, now we're going to see why. And this father called Jeremiah the weeping prophet. Now look right here at this because I want to say something that I want you uh, to understand. There are going to be times in your life, well, let me, let me put this way, let me back up. In religion, we are, we'll come and when we're around people, we think we're going to put a fake, a phony smile upon the face that a Christian ought to always be happy. You can be so right with God that you feel His heart and your heart can be grieved over what you see. And so that's basically what he's saying right here. Uh, so let's go into the, the, what I want you to understand. There's a time to weep. There's a time for joy. Yeah. And there's a, there's, a, there's a time to be quiet. There's a time to be loud. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there's a time to be taught. There's a time to teach. And wisdom is knowing what, uh, what time it is. Yes. Okay, so when, when Jeremiah the prophet, he is so one with God. Mm -hmm. Now what, when, you, when we talk about Jeremiah, we're talking about one of the most beautiful Prophetic pictures of the remnant church, and uh, let me let me say this because uh, this is very important because this is the hour that we're living in. Uh, we're really going to see this tonight. Okay, that in uh, Matthew chapter seven, I think verses thirteen to fourteen. You don't need to turn to it, but it says, "Wide is the path that leads to destruction, and you'll find many people upon that path. But narrow is the path that leads to life, yes. and you find few people upon that path." Now that is a picture of what I'm going to illustrate prophetically and in the scriptures tonight. There's a professional religious system that is forsaking Christ, and it's all about their church doctrine. It's all about doctrine to demon, doctrine to men, tradition to men that make null and void the word of God. And they keep the Holy Spirit out. You see, uh, Jesus of Jesus on the outside. <laughs> I keep moving pictures around. So. <laughs> yeah, pictures shifted uh Anointing. So you see Jesus on the outside knocking, trying to get in. Okay, so uh, we're going to see tonight, because it's important that you and I understand this, especially you're called to ministry. You really need to understand it because you're going to need this on your journey. That there's a professional religious system. They know Hebrew, they know Greek, they got perfect grammar. They're how they have educated their heads to the expense of the spirit band. 
there's, there's little or no anointing upon their life, and they won't let the gifts of the Holy Spirit operate, and they say there's no more sign, wonders, miracles, healing, deliver, talking in tongues, and gifts of the Holy Spirit, then they'll add them. And if it happens, that's the devil. Okay, so that's a professional religious system that's about their denomination, their organization, their church, or their ministry, or their movement that they're involved in. And so they have forsaken Christ, and there's, there's this so-called Christian game that's being played. And so we're going to really see that tonight. That this, so Jeremiah is saying this. He's saying, my heart is within me. It's broken because of the promise. Now, what you're going to see here are the false prophets, okay? And that's just basically what I illustrate. And you'll see this in great detail tonight. Okay, so uh, my title again tonight is very important. Truth or consequences? Okay, so when we compromise truth so that we won't offend people and we're willing to offend God so that people will come to our meetings, our church, our denominational organization, and we, and we care more about them coming and the money they put in the offering rather than getting them right with God, getting them to heaven, we have, we have missed it, okay? Yeah. So Jeremiah is saying a whole lot of what he's going to be talking about is a nation that has the covenant with God that has forsaken God. Yeah. The only nation upon the face of the earth that has the covenant with God, and then as a nation and as a people, they have forsaken yeah. God. And uh, well, I can't wait to so get this sad. one scripture up. You know, I'm just going to do that. Let me go there. Keep your finger there. Because uh, I feel like I need to say this right now because this is about the third time. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 2. And, and what you're going to see tonight is this illustrated. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, I want to take it to because this is real important that you understand this. In Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. For my people, whose people? Take okay, God's people, the people that have come to with God. My people have committed two evils. Okay, they, so God said they've done two things wrong, two evils. Number one, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. What did they, who did they forsake? They yeah. forsake God. And it, there's the river, there's the life, there's the water. Okay, okay they, they, they forsook living, they had living waters, and they forsook living waters. Okay, that's, that's what that's saying. And number two, so they forsook God and the, the fountain of the living waters. And what have they done? They have hewn out for themselves citron, cisterns, broken cisterns that can contain no water. Now what that cisterns mean, that's the religious system. In other words, they got their own little organization. They got their own little group. They're going to say uh, they've forsaken God and the living waters. Because living waters move. Yes. And they don't want God to move. They don't want the Spirit to move. So then they put God in the box and said, we're going to do things our way. Okay, so that's a beautiful illustration of a professional religious system. They have forsaken God, the, who is the fountain of living water. Because if you drink of that water, you'd be alive. Yes. But see, they're yes. choosing the little of the law that kills because yes. the Spirit makes alive. Mm -hmm. There's a contrast, okay? So there would be people in the flesh operating in the energy of the flesh that's spiritually dead, and they got an organization, they got their doctrine, they got their teaching, they got their theories, yes. but they have forsaken God, who is the fountain of yes. living water. Okay, they have forsaken God and the fountain of living water, so they are the, they're not drinking the water that's alive, that live the law, kills. Okay, so that's why they're dead. You can find, um, and well, here's what it said, they hewed out, broken, hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns that could hold no water. Okay, so they figured, okay, uh, we're going to create a system, and uh, like Pastor Brian was saying Sunday morning, uh, one of the, I think it's Habakkuk, but I'm not for sure. Uh, you put money in the bank, but the bank has holes, and you put money in them, and the money just goes out. And what this is saying can contain, can contain the water, which is a type of the Spirit. Now let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 23. I was going to share that scripture there later, but I think, I think it's better that you understand this right here from the beginning, what we're saying tonight. And remember, when you couple the Old Testament, then my, pe my people, that had a covenant with God, they, they've done two evils. Forsaken God, Lord. who is the fountain of living waters, they and they've hewed out, they create a system uh, for themselves Ooh. that they're in control, and God not in control. Yes. They're yes. Lord, they're in control, and that rather than the Spirit of God, they get control. Yes. Okay, so Jeremiah then, his assignment, is a, his assignment is the same as our assignment. You're going to see the nation, Lord. and you're going to see his nation, and forsake God, and see where our nation is. Yes. So my heart within me is broken. 
there's going to be a time in your life that you're going to you're going to pick things up in the spirit about someone, and and you will God will give you His heart for that person, and you'll weep and you'll be quiet, and you're going to intercession. You will feel the very heart of God about different people, different circumstances, situation, responds to the altar calls, and, and sometimes people don't respond, and people go, you hear Pastor James, there'll, there'll be a wailing. When she goes in that wailing, that's, a, that's an intercession, that's, that's the type of intercession that God has called it to. Okay, so what I want to get across to you, that because on Friday nights we're going to be doing about the manifestation of the Spirit, and how... And relating and responding to God when you see weeping and wailing, travailing and agonizing, groanings that cannot be uttered, is that what what's God going to do? He go. We're going to begin to feel the very heart of God. We're going to have the thoughts of God. There's three scriptures in the Old Testament. One of the minor prophets that talk about hearing the thoughts of God. You will begin to hear God's thought. You begin to hear God's voice. You will begin to feel His heart. And so Jeremiah here saying, "My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones are shaking." Now, what do you say? We're going to see that the prophets here is talking about a false prophet, not true prophet, because they were called the truth, but they chose to forsake truth and chose a lie. And we're going to see the consequences. So, there's truth or consequences. There's truth or lies. When you when they choose a lie, then they choose the consequences. When we choose the sin, people are choosing the consequences. People, what the devil does is lie to people and deceive people. There's no consequence. You will reap God's God's loving, God's patient. Um, um, there's consequences of sin. Let's put it this way. Uh, and there's many, many people in hell that, that said, uh, uh, "I'll get saved later. I'll get saved when I'm old." Okay, so he says, I'm, "My heart within me is broken because of the prophets, and all my bones are shaking. I'm like a drunken man, I, and like a man whom wine has overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of His holiness." Now look right here, just a minute. Let me kind of illustrate something for you. Basically, what he's saying is, here, Jeremiah is, is he's alone with God. He's, he spends much time alone. And what, what he's seeing, he's seeing the contrast between God and where supposedly God's people are. But when he sees the holiness of God, and he sees the people, not only are they supposed to be God's people, but they have forsaken God, and the fountain of the living waters, and they've turned away from truth to a lie. So he's seeing this, and so he's so troubled, Here's when, here's where I get in trouble. When I stop feeling what God feels for the lost and the backslidden and people that are, have chosen to live a life and they're coming to church, drinking, drunk, and fornicating, lying, cheating, stealing, and say, I will go to God. I'm still saying, I'm a Christian. There's a lie from the pit of hell. Yeah. Okay, so there's a whole lot here. And the, basically, when you see that great big contrast of, of, of who God really is yes. and where people are living a life, they're in bondage. There's that you will begin to. There's a place in God you will feel. You'll hear God's thought. You will feel God's heart. So Jeremiah is using the illustration here that that there's there's times that he says I I, I stumble like a drunk man, like a man who's been overtaken with wine. And there's there's a place that you will be so one with God, and you'll see the holiness of God. You will realize the potentiality of the anointing, what you can have of God, and you see where people are choosing to live way down there. And still yes. pretending and acting like and confessing that they're a believer, that they're yes. a Christian, that they love God, but you see that they don't. Right. And so yes. Jeremiah here is weeping, he's running, he's trembling, he, he, oh. he can't even walk right. And he says, I stumble like a man that's been overcome with wine because of the Lord, because of the words of his holiness. So let, let me put it this way the words of his holiness is that basically he is so aware of truth. He is so aware of truth and that. The power and the purity and the love and the anointing, the fulfillment when you come into alignment with truth. Yeah. And they see where people are, are not in alignment. Yeah. And when people are not in alignment, don't miss it. When people are not in alignment, when they choose to love their sin, they choose to love the world, and they're covered, they'll blame someone else. They blame the pastor, they blame the song leader, they blame this, they blame this. They've got to find someone to blame rather than men. I, I, I love my sin. I love my comfort. I love the world. I love darkness. I love immorality. I, I love my pornography. I'm not going to give it up. I have no intention upon changing. So they will blame someone. I'm a, they're trying to paint a picture. I'm the victim and they play the blame game. And what it is is smoke and mirrors. 
Because what happened, truth comes, yes. and that's what Jeremiah is saying. The truth has come, and people yes. choose not to come into alignment with right. truth. So they're choosing the trick and crooked right. way, and they're, they're not in alignment. So Jeremiah is saying how, what could be, and see what really is. Yeah. Now, that's one of the most important things that we see when we see how, this, how Christianity should be. When you see truth, then you see where I really am. And that's, yes. that's a very powerful thing to see your own condition. Yes. Yes. See, when you see your own condition, what will happen? When I begin to deal with my stuff, then I begin to realize, well, that's I'm not right. the only person who got problems. Someone, yeah. Sister Solomon got problems too. <laughs> and I said, in the beginning, I thought, oh, man, I'm the only one that's wiped out. I didn't realize how, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just uh, not bound up. And uh, I was blinded, and I was just trying to, I was just trying to, to come alive myself and then go, what's wrong with me? Cool. Well, there's a whole lot wrong with me, but yeah. <laughs> and it took a while to figure that out, okay? Yes. Now, what he's saying here is, and I just evaluate if you see it in this in our nation. From the verse 10, for the land is full of adulterers. Yeah. If you were to be honest, there is so much sexual perversion and immorality everywhere. Yeah. I don't know how anybody, I wouldn't know how anybody, I'm saying. Now you may, you may, you don't have to agree with it. I don't know how anybody who's not a Christian can ever be faithful to marriage. I don't either. Because right, it's everywhere. You yeah. go everywhere. You need have to be looking. It'll, it'll knock on your door. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's a, it's a, wherever you go, it, it's everywhere. Immorality, perversion, uh, adultery, fornication, it's everywhere. And so I have no idea how anyone who's not really, you got to not only be saved, you got to really be saved. Yes, really. You know, keep your clothes on. Okay, for the, the land is... So he says, why? Because the land is full of adultery. Yeah. Full of du adultery. And because of the swearing of the land mourning, the land is mourning. The land is weeping. The land is... Yeah. His people aren't, but the land is. Yeah. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Uh, so the Garden of Eden becomes a, a desert. Okay, so that's, that's, a, that's a profane picture of sin, the consequence of the sin. The wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. Now, for, verse 11, for both prophet and priest are profane, are immoral, are they giving themselves for the wickedness. They are profane. Yea, in my, in my house, God says, in my house. I'm telling you, right when you can admit there's something in your own house, yes, my temple. there's hope. Yes. And everything. I know. I know Sister Sonja's house has got problems. Wait, wait, every house has got problems. Every yes. church has problems, okay? Yes. God has said, there's, there's where religion is. In religion, people don't want to admit there's any problems in church. And if there's anyone in the church, there'll be problems. Yes. If I walk into it, there'll be problems. Yes. If one of two, you walk in, there'll be yes. some problems. Yes. God is saying, in my house, I have found wicked, their wickedness, save the Lord. Okay, that's what, that's what I'm trying to communicate to you. Yeah. Is that it's not just the, the it's not just in the nightclubs. It's not just out there. It's in the house of God, yeah. and that's where the problem is. Okay, it's in the house of God. God's admitting that. Now Jeremiah is seeing and he's hearing and he's feeling because he's already said about what he's feeling and what he felt was so troubling him. He was walking like a drunk man. Mm -hmm. Okay, so verse twelve. Wherefore their way. Be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. Now imagine walking on something very slippery in the night. You can't see where you're walking. And the ground being uneven, so people slip and they fall. Okay, so their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. Now, the important thing that we need to understand here is that they have chosen... Well, let me, let me put it the way the Scripture does. This is the condemnation. Light has come to the world, but men love darkness. Made of darkness. And they will not come to the light. Yes. Because their deeds are evil. Yes. Okay? They don't want their evil deeds to be exposed. People say, I don't come to church. Because I have a hypocrite. They don't want me down there. No, they love darkness. Right. And they will not come to light unless their evil deeds be exposed. Right. Okay, so this is, the, this is the condemnation. Light has come, but they love darkness. Okay, so why are they, why are they in the darkness? Because they rejected the light. Yes. These are the only people who are covenant with God. Okay, so they have rejected light. Yes. While playing the role of victim and blame game, somebody else, somebody, somebody walked by me and didn't say, well, somebody rolled their eyes at me, so therefore I'm gonna, I'm gonna go become a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
blame someone else. Someone hand me a hand, bunch of grapes, and one of the grapes was half rotten. And so I'm going to be on the serial killer. So why are they slipping and dunking? Because they rejected the light. Okay, they showed me. Why did they choose darkness? Because they love darkness. Now we're going to see this over and over again. Now, my title tonight is Truth or Consequences. So there's truth or lies, and uh, we're going to see that. Well, and then again, tonight, uh, well, recently it said John chapter 8, everybody has a spiritual father. Every true believer, God is their father. Every unbeliever, the devil is their father. Okay, so that, that's their father. And Jesus said in John chapter 8, your father is the devil who was a liar from the beginning. Yeah. So then basically what happens is when people choose to reject light because they love darkness, so they choose darkness because they love darkness, yeah. now they're slipping and they're falling yes. in the darkness, okay? Yes. And uh, so there are consequences that we're going to see here. Now, Lord. verse 12, Wherefore their ways shall be to them slippery ways in the darkness, they shall be... They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. Okay, they're opening up the doors for evil to come in, for sin to come in. Okay, so, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. Verse 13, For I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria, and they prophesied in Baal, and they prophesied and caused my people in Israel to err. They're prophesying in Baal. Now, this is my definition. You don't have to define it this way. Baal worship to me. Baal meant uh, the, the God of the increase. Basically, it was the far God. And they believed uh, the worship, the word, this was their source of income and their farm increase, their money. So, um, don't, don't play, sweet, don't play. This is serious, okay? It'll be shot to the jive. This is the life being changed here. Okay, so, uh, basically, Baal worship is about money and astral. Is about sex, and then you could just reverse both of those, okay? Okay, so bail money, so they're prophesied. Now, here's, here's what I'm saying what you're going to see today, what you're going to see today is that people will come into the house of God and prophets of Baal will say, Give me a thousand dollars, and I'll prophesy to you. Yeah. And so people are giving a thousand dollars, and someone give them the word, and, and they're giving a word, but God did not 